I look up, you know, I don't see any planes coming down on Eagle Lake Road yet. So, um, you know, they've, they've got major, major obstacles, including lack of support from the FAA, lack of support from, from the Department of Transportation. The FAA is a politically driven, uh, you know, government bureaucracy, which is, is incompetent. I've always been saying there's going to be major scandals there at the level of incompetence. I mean, they got air traffic controllers falling asleep. You know, they've got they allow convertible planes now. You know, with the top of off when you're flying, they're not doing the inspections and stuff that they're supposed to get the airlines to do the inspections. Um, and uh, they 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 have been dragging their feet on this all along. So they try to play both sides of the fence, you know, and make Jesse happy and say, oh, yeah, moving forward, moving forward. But they've been moving forward awfully, awfully slowly. Well, does the FAA have all the information to start the study or not? That's a good question. We've been told that before, but then it ended up not to be true. And sometimes the newspapers get information from Susan Shea and others, and it's not quite 100% accurate. And uh, so we'll see. We don't know. Uh, I'll find that out by our next stand meeting. Find out exactly. Talk to somebody definitely. Find out what exactly they're doing, what their timetable is, and all that. One thing you know that Susan Shea also was quoted in the paper recently is as justification as to why kids home is needed is because employment at both field has risen. So they've gone from a twenty or forty or something like that to a hundred. Okay, well, some of those are small jets that are owned by businessmen who fly into the field and they go to Chicago for meetings. But a lot of them, as John's wife Lydia and I know, because I work for the road district, we're outside, she's looking out her window. These are small guys who fly a plane, they have a plane, and they fly around eastern Will County over our homes. So while that's increased, that would increase because a lot of small aviation airports like in Frankfurt and that closed down. And the guys are coming out to both field and they're flying their planes. What a stretch of the imagination to use Jim Bolt's field employment increase to justify an airport. I mean, a hundred flights. That's I mean, how they count people to justify an airport, too. Huh? That's how they count people the same way. They right, they so grab us as their conference. Right. Thank you. Right. About uh, three weeks ago, I went down to Springfield, and uh, the reason I was going down there because I work in the addictions field, I'm concerned about the addictions field, I'm on the board of directors for South Suburban Council on Alcoholism, which is a large treatment, treatment provider in the South Suburbs. They've been around 40 years. Uh, they used to have 150 employees, they're down to 105. They're, they get state funding, but the workers there are not state employees. They have people that work for $12 an hour and are devoted to helping alcoholics and drug addicts. And so, about two months ago, South Suburban Council got a letter from the state of Illinois saying that uh, stop admitting new patients and figure out what to do with the ones you've got. Because we're, we're eliminating all funding. And, and that wasn't just this program, but it's programs throughout the state. Now these programs save taxpayers money because the, of the people that go through there, a certain amount of them get sober, another a certain amount reduce their you know, uh, destructive behavior. So there's less people in emergency rooms, less people crashing into us on the highways, less uh, criminal justice system problems. So it's been proven again and again that an investment in treatment works. But Quinn's, you know, wants to wipe out the whole thing. We got our reprieve for about uh, two or three months, and then the funding's would probably be going again. So I was going down there as part of, uh, with some people from the addictions field, to lobby and talk to people and try and uh, say that this is crazy. And um, so while I was down there, I uh, uh, decided to try and contact Steve Brown, who's uh, Madigan's number one guy. He's been with Madigan 25 years. He's a spokesman. He's uh, you know, his main, main guy. And I talked to him on the phone over the years because of the airport, and he knows who I am and all that. So he was willing to see me. So I went in his office, and I brought in some guy from the leader of the addictions field. We talked a little bit about addictions and about the airport. And, uh, and of course, I made the connection. Uh, I know where the addictions field could find $110 million. <laughs> uh, but my point was, um, you know, in talking to Brown, uh, what I came away from that was, he, what he said 
is that nobody in Springfield is pushing it. You know, it's just not on their radar down there. This is Quinn and Jesse at this point. And uh, so he also said that with the federal uh, situation the way it is, there's not going to be money for projects like that. What disturbs me, though, is because I've talked to him before. You know what? One of the reasons I decided to run for uh, state rep was because I got pissed off by him doing my, a couple of years, a year and a half ago. I call him up and say, Steve, there's this crisis. You know, and it, about, he says, what crisis? I don't know what crisis. Quinn wants to put $110 million in, into buying land, buying land. He says, oh, well, uh, the airport will never be built. You know, if the state buys the land, they can sell it back. That's the kind of attitude uh, that I picked up on. And, you know, not to blame Steve Brown, I think that's just the mentality they have now. What's $110 million, you know? Um, so, uh, 